hello everyone i am bhavika bansal from chandigarh civil services and in this video i'll discuss with you section a of paper 2 of upsc law optional paper of 2023 which comprises of indian penal code and the law of torts and i'll also explain how these could be attempted in this paper 2 of law optional the questions are very simple and direct the questions are not really twisted and most of the paper of uh, part a is from law of crimes and the uh, portion from law of torts is a little lesser in this first question is discuss the doctrine of transferred malice as applied to law relating to culpable homicide under the indian penal code of 1860 firstly in this define what is transferred malice along with its section and that is uh, section 301 then essentials of section 301 can be stated also give an illustration for it also in the end you can add cases like in this you can cite shankarlal versus state of gujarat or vishwanath pillai versus state of kerala the second part is discuss the nature and scope of right of private defense of property along with limitations if any on the exercise of such right This answer can be started by defining what is right to private defense of a person and property then explain its scope by mentioning offenses of theft robbery mischief criminal trespass in the end also write the limitations of the de uh, this defense like when there is no time to recourse to public authorities and uh, uh, the private defense must stop when the danger finishes this is all that has to be mentioned in this third question it is the illustrate the doctrine of constructive criminality with reference to law on abetment this answer can be started by explaining the doctrine of constructive criminality but all its scopes and all uh, the entire scope is not to be touched and it has to be explained only with reference to abetment uh, in this state the relevant provisions that is section 107 to 120 of ipc then come and define abetment so after this abetment uh has to be uh, described in its various forms which are by instigation conspiracy and intentionally aiding this all can be discussed as per section 107 now the next question is of torts he who acts through another does the act himself discuss the tortious liability entailed in the above statement so this question is talking about the vicarious liability the statement of the question is itself a translation of a latin maxim Q uh, face it per alium face it per se, which means that he who acts through another does the act himself. In this, principal agent, ma master servant, or employer-employee relation can be mentioned. This is the last part of question one. Explain the various kind of damages that a plaintiff can claim after a tort has been committed against him. a simple question you can start by explaining about damages that they are monetary compensation which may be liquidated or unliquidated then simply list out all kinds of damages like compensatory nominal contemptuous future general specific and also explain them in short now coming to the second question its part 1 is a 20 year old girl g was coming back to home after attending college a man m held her shut her mouth and dragged her to a nearby bush where he slit the girl's throat thereby killing her thereafter he raped her decide what offenses if any m has committed in the above case explain the relevant statutory provisions in detail so this question is based on the recent case decided by the division bench of karnataka high court in this firstly the offense of section 302 is uh, that is murder has been committed so the ingredients of murder can be mentioned that and it can be proved then after this the question talks about rape of dead body which is the offense of necrophilia this is not an offense in india and a rape of dead body is not covered in the ambit of rape under section 375 so the accused cannot be charged for it in conclusion but you can mention the provision of section 297 which talks about indignity to human corpse this can be considered as an offense the next part is in negligence the chain of causation must remain intact describe the essentials of negligence by referring case laws 
it is a simple question start by explaining what is negligence then write down its essentials and explain them that are duty to care breach of duty and damages and also add a case laws for it now this question is define atrocity also discuss the acts that amount to atrocity under the provisions of the schedule castes and schedule tribes prevention of atrocities act of 1989 so now in this answer you can start with the concept of untouchability which is given under article 17 of the constitution of india which will give you a nice start and introduction and then you can link <coughs> the act with this article and come to the definition of atrocity that is uh, given under section 2a of the act after this list out and explain the acts which fall under the ambit of atrocity like violence bonded labor etc now coming to the next question 3 part a discuss the law relating to assault of criminal force to women with intent to outrage or modesty and sexual harassment as defined under the indian penal code of 1860 is there any difference between the two explain the question is very easy firstly explain and give the essentials of section 354 then come to section 354a and the same has to be done for it also but don't forget to mention the amendment with which the provision was inserted uh, section 354a lastly lay out the difference between both the offenses in a table format along with the punishment of both the offenses now this question is elaborate the reasons for including e-commerce in consumer protection act of 2019 also discuss the consequences for not complying with the provisions of the act by the e-commerce entities firstly define what is e-commerce as defined under the act of 2019 then lay down the reasons that why this was included in the act which is due to growing online market fair trade practices lastly you have to mention the consequences like the penalties suspension of license along with the relevant legal provisions of the act the last part of question number 3 is elucidate the essentials of private nuisance also discuss the remedies available to a plaintiff in a suit for private nuisance this is also a direct question firstly explain what is private nuisance you can also distinguish it from public nuisance in just one line then give its essentials that are like unlawful interference with the enjoyment of land and damages lastly list out the different remedies and available under various provisions like that of uh, specific relief act and uh, civil procedure code all those can be mentioned now this is the last question of part a in this question number 4 the part a is dishonest intention is the gist of the offense of theft examine the above statement with the help of relevant illustrations also discuss how theft is different from dishonest misappropriation of property firstly start by defining what is theft and lay down its essentials also given illustration now coming to the second part of the question it is asking the difference between theft and dishonest misappropriation of property you can list out the differences in the form of table in the tabular form the second part is examine the term undue un advantage as defined under the prevention of corruption act 1988 also discuss the persons authorized and the procedure required to be followed while investigating cases that are registered under the prevention of corruption act of 1988 a uh, very simple and very direct question start by undue advantages uh, definition under the act and explain it you also have to mention the amendment of uh, 2018 which inserted this provision then state the person which which are authorized that are officers not below the rank of uh, dsp and acp along with the relevant sections lastly explain the procedure of investigation like the so seizure arrest etc and explain the entire procedure in short coming to the last question of part a critically analyze with the help of decided cases the essentials to be proved by a plaintiff in a suit for damages for malicious prosecution simply start by defining malicious prosecution and then lay down the essentials of it which are prosecution by defendant without reasonable cause malice of defendant and damage to the plaintiff then also add a case law in the end for each 
so this was all about section a of paper 2 of 2023 in the next video i'll discuss with you section b of paper 2 of the optional of 2023 until then if you wish to get any of these questions evaluated you can mail them to me at law.bhavikabansal at gmail.com